So after day two at Lords between England and South Africa in the first test, it's time to ask George. It was a very physical one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit, yeah, a bit of the top. Um, Danny, heard of him, asks, Hello. Rain yesterday. Hello, Danny. Overrates today. Will this match manage to illustrate everything that George, uh, that annoys George about test cricket? It makes me sound like a very grumpy man. But, um... But no, <laughs> no, because it's a really good wicket, isn't it? And a uh, fun wicket, as it was for the other test here in the summer. So they've done really well with that, because, to be honest, the wickets at Lords used to be rubbish. And I used to rant about that a lot, didn't I? And also, they didn't do anything wrong with the rain yesterday, apart from not having a roof. Uh, they, uh, you, you know, you couldn't blame the umpires for not playing. So uh, I, I, I feel I'm not that grumpy. I'm mm. a hoot. I'm a mm. hoot, Danny. One, I mean, one thing that the viewers and, and the listeners inevitably, because they would have they would have turned off on something else, is uh, that does annoy you the most about uh, Test cricket is the lack of biscuits, of course. Uh, biscuit gate. Well, you can't complain about these things here because, um, but generally at Lords, you used to turn up and get a lovely cup of coffee, pastries, and biscuits in the morning, so you don't need to eat anywhere else. And they, you know, and then there was a lovely coronation chicken sandwich in the afternoon. There have been cuts. I mean, we can't really complain. <laughs> we can't really complain, and it's not like I need any more to eat. But uh, yes, there have been some cuts. <laughs> but I'm not complaining about that. I'm not really complaining about anything. I mean, look how lovely it looks behind us, and it's been fun. So, uh, yeah, I'm not that grumpy. <laughs> All the time. Richard Anderson asks, when will people learn to stop writing off this England team after day one of the test? I'm not sure when he said this. But uh, well, let's, I let's reflect upon it now. Um, well, firstly, did they? Did anyone write them off after the first day? I don't think they did, did they? And secondly, if they had done, they probably would have been right. <laughs> so, um, you, you, your point is right. England are, uh, have shown all summer that they're an unpredictable side with some character who can bounce back. But make no mistakes, they're in a mess in this game. Can they only, are they only a team that can bounce back? Are they only a counter-attacking team? Do they need to be on the That's a really uh, good question. They seem to need inspiration. Uh, and I think probably the best teams sort of can rely a bit more on technique and sort of organisation. But I don't know because we're still finding out about them. But four times in a row, they have beaten good sides from behind. And they deserve a lot of credit for that. And they've done that largely through... Um, skill, character and all those sorts of things but there also were quite specific conditions you know, the pitches were flat the balls were quite flat they're very good at counter-attacking they played the style of cricket that made them into that uh, formidable white ball side so uh, they're going to be tested in a different way here you know, we've all watched far too much cricket to think that you can predict exactly what's going to happen it wouldn't be the wonderful game it is if you could but South Africa are well on top make no bones about it Tom Graham asks... Hello, Tom. Was there ever a time you get the lower order batters out without bowling short? <laughs> well, apparently the stats show... Answer his own question, really. <laughs> apparently the stats show that it works, but I think, you know, other sides would have people who would do it a slightly different way, wouldn't they? Um, you know, Wacky Eunice, famously, with the, with the Yorker, for example. Um... Yeah, England look a bit uh, one-dimensional that way. All you would say, to be fair, is that the balls do change in character. The bowlers do get more tired. You know, if you have an opening pair who add up to the age of 76, you, you are going to have to be uh, careful about the way you use them over long innings. So um, I'd cut them a bit of slack for that. And I thought today, after Stokes took that first wicket with a bouncer, and a hell of a bouncer it was too, he might never bowl full again. But he took a wicket and over later with a, with a full ball. So what do I know? Uh, you, your, your point is valid, though. Yeah, they, they overdo it. Sushan asks, are the rumours true that every time someone says Baz Ball in the press box, they have to go out for 10 minutes? I'm not sure it's exclusive to Baz Ball. <laughs> no, sadly. Um, but, to, to, you know, I haven't really got caught up in using that. I think I've only used that expression once. And I didn't inhale. But you've written it a few more times, I, haven't. I would suspect. I don't think I have. Maybe, maybe a direct quotes, but no. No, because I don't really think it... I think it's a bit um, reductive. Do you want me to go on? 
That's probably a bit boring. No, no, no. I don't oh, yeah. think we need to show our <laughs> colleagues anymore. Um, Tweet Monkey asks, shouldn't all Test Nations use one brand of ball, uh, especially in the World Test Championship? Oh, I don't know. Murky waters here, murky waters. I don't know that you need homogenisation of cricket, and um, I don't know how you would agree upon that. Um, and I don't know that the same brand of ball is suited to everywhere. I mean, I, I have generally preferred the Dukes because I think it keeps the bowler in the game and I think the game's more fun when ball is slightly on top of bat. But, you know, they've been poor this summer. They have been poor. Uh, uh, maybe a bit of uh, competition in the market is no bad thing as well. So I take the point that, but you're always going to be playing in different conditions and I don't actually know how well the Dukes ball would last in Perth or, or somewhere. Mm. I just don't know. You know, Dukes would tell you that they could adapt it to, to make it, you know, last anywhere. But they would, wouldn't they? 